Hey, Warren, can you hear me? I can, Raymond. How are you? I wasn't sure we were getting connected there, but uh, okay, we're in good shape. How many people do we have? Well, we had about 190 registered, but it's about 70 on at the moment. Oh, okay. About and 70. Um, yeah, about a minute. So um, we'll just wait about one minute, Raymond, and then we'll just get straight on the way. Okay, that's fine. I'm just glad we got connected. Me too. How's how's everything going over in Virginia, in America? Busy enough, but uh, everything's really pretty good. We're better off than the rest of the world is, for the most part. Uh, yeah. That's, that's the benefit to living as a hermit. You stay away from other people's energy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's true. See, uh, we want to tell the folks tonight about uh, how energy is contagious. Uh, it is far more contagious than a disease. Yes, I can understand. Well, it's now six o'clock. So what I'm going to quickly do, Raymond, is just um, announce the format of the webinar for everyone, if that's okay. Okay, that's fine. Yep, we have a lot of people now. We have almost 90 people, so I think it's definitely got some interest. So, okay, everyone. So welcome to the webinar tonight on Change Your Energy, Change Your Life with um, Raymond and myself. And I'm very privileged and very pleased that Raymond has come to speak again. I always find his wisdom valuable and very helpful, especially in times like right now we're going through. So just to make sure the webinar is a nice, orderly, well-structured kind of a way, what we're gonna be doing is this, is a quick like introduction. So we'll be starting off where Raymond, I will be asking some questions about energy and how it's contagious, contagious and how we can change the energy. During that process, we will just, you know, just discuss a little bit things that you can do and how the mind and the brain works and just how just our different just basically how what we focus on is what we create i will briefly share my own experience which prompted this webinar about being your own doctor where i actually literally to my joyous amazement raymond challenged me about two or three months ago on a one-on-one -on -one call and said to me warren you you don't need to keep going to homeopaths and others all the time you can apply what I've taught you and use it, which I started to do. And it's been working like you wouldn't believe. And I mean, Raymond, I've got a lot more to share with you that's happened even in the last week on this, like amazing stuff. So then after that, we've got some questions, which, um, uh, which you sent in to us quite kindly, which I've taken notes of. And then finally, at the end of it, we'll be talking about how you can continue staying connected with Raymond by his newsletter, in his daily energy clearing group. And I'll be sharing briefly on a free kind of webinar I plan to do next week on being your own physician or doctor and how, just a bit more about how I did that, just for anyone who wants to know a little bit more and stay connected with me. So without further ado, thank you, Raymond, for coming to join us. I hope I'm speaking slowly enough for you. And if I'm not, just let me know. You may need, don't just speak any faster. You may need to slow down a little bit. But uh, put a little space between your words, and I think we'll okay. be fine. We have 115 people on now. So 115. So, well, Raymond, let's get started. So share a little bit more about yourself to the folks you don't know, and especially about energy being contagious. I think it's a good way to start. A good way to start is about energy being contagious and how energy does really affect us and our surroundings. Okay, um, let me show you what I can do here. What I believe I have learned is that energy is not confined to a specific distance. Um, 
it seems like that we can send energy to anyone, anyone on the planet. Uh, I've learned that s several years ago. And uh, if we communicate with someone who has a lot of problems and they want to complain a lot, and we listen to them, that energy is going to affect us, no matter how far away they are. That's why I don't listen to people complain. I tell people, tell me in one sentence, uh, you hope I can help you. If I can, I will. I do not really uh, need to know about all of your aches and pains and all of your traumas you've been through in life. Uh, just uh, enough to give me an idea. Because if you listen to these people, uh, they will, they're going to, to bring your energy down. Uh, so what I want to do is pick their energy up, not let them bring mine down. That's why I don't listen a whole lot, uh, only as much as I need to know. Um, and I've just observed this over a lifetime that um, if you associate with people that bitch whine and complain all the time, they will drain your energy. So I just won't do it. I don't care if it's social, socially acceptable or not. I just don't do it. Uh, why? I just refuse to let someone do that to me. Um, so, uh, if there's things that's going on, dangerous things, let's say, in one place, I don't want to get into this in detail. Uh, it's, it would be a little awkward. But this week, I found out there was quite a bit of danger in one particular area of the country that I had kind of been accustomed to because I have a pretty good psychic friend there who contacted me. Well, instead of this one particular area of the country, I found out that people in other areas of the country were being affected by the same thing. So um, I'll have to, I've got to be kind of discreet on this, but it was a very potentially dangerous situation, especially for females. Matter, matter of fact, mostly female. And um, all I can say here, really, all I'm comfortable saying is we did something to stop it. When we did, I did a bit of checking with just a few friends across the country. They had felt about the same thing. And all at once, it just goes away. Why? Because we did something to stop it. Now, that's about all the details I'm comfortable putting out today because I do a lot of things <clears throat> I don't really talk about, but I like for people to know what's possible, and that's why I'm trying to tell it in a very simple manner. We found a dangerous, very potentially dangerous situation for a large segment of the population, did something about it, and the danger goes away. And you say, what did we do about it? <clears throat> it's, uh, since I don't ever know who's listening out there, I hesitate to say a whole lot. Let's just say we stopped it. <clears throat> and the question is always going to be, how did you do that? And my answer is always going to be with intent. Uh, people ask, <clears throat> excuse me, the time that, that you and I cleaned up the water there in uh, the lake right north of Perth that uh, supplies the water for the whole city. I got a lot of emails. How did you do this? I did it with intent. And that is the answer to everything that we've ever accomplished. So I cannot uh, overstate the importance of your intent. Now, let's say this. Intent needs to be supported by functioning at the appropriate brain frequency which is generally an alpha brain frequency, that's spelled A-L-P-H-A. And the power of thought is in the alpha brain frequency. See, there's four brain frequencies. Um, right here. Um, delta, beta, no, delta, 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 theta, alpha, and beta. Okay, as you go along, it gets higher. I won't get into all the technicalities right now. Jose Silva taught this, and he did a, <clears throat> a much better job at it than, I, than I'm doing. But those are the four brain frequencies. And those are the frequencies which we've explained before on some of the previous shows 
that uh, people go through, uh, or children go through as you get older. For example, up to about three years old, uh, kids are functioning in a very low brain frequency called delta. Then they move in at around the age of three to seven, they move into a frequency called theta. At around seven, they move into a frequency called alpha. At around 14 or so, when the body becomes physically mature, the brain frequency speeds up and the, the majority of them function in a beta brain frequency then. Well, the power of thought is in low brain frequency, not high brain frequency. So that, and if this gets too complicated, you can simply call it a relaxed state of mind. To get it even more simple, you could call it daydreaming. Uh, so whenever you wish to accomplish something, you want your brain to be in a low brain frequency. Don't worry about numbers, that just complicates things. So just call it a relaxed state of mind. That keeps everything simple because that is where the power of thought is. And whenever you will function in the low brain frequency with strong intent and believing that you can accomplish something, chances are you will accomplish it. If you're doing something and saying, well, I don't know if it's gonna work or not, it probably won't, you're probably right. So it, it uh, falls in under the statement of whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're probably right. So I, I hope that briefly covers it, but go, go ahead with your questions. And it, sometimes I ramble too much. So when I do uh -huh. just uh, to change the subject or something, it, uh, it, it won't bother me at all. I think you made a really good comment about um, what if you believe you can't do it, then you probably can't. And I can remember I was absolutely adamant that, or certain Raymond, that if I ate certain foods, I would probably get indigestion. So if I ate too much bread, too much burgers um, and all that, I'd pull on belly fat. And I started to challenge myself on this about six months ago. And I said, well, hang on a sec. What if I changed my belief that whatever I eat, if I enjoy it, it's going to actually be good for my health and, and my body can digest it. And I've actually noticed I've gone from where I was eating a lot of kind of very vegan herbs, minimal meat to eating a lot, a lot of meat. I used to eat a lot of vegetables and I thought, well, what if I had no vegetables for quite a while at all and just simply said that whenever I'm eating will give me all the nutrients I need and whatever supplements I need for vitamins, um, flower essences, herbs, I can get from my food and from energy. And I've been getting and every time I eat lots of steak, lots of meat, lots of bread, lots of sausages. I've noticed that the more I'm doing it and the less vegetables I'm eating, the more that I'm just eating what I feel like, I'm getting healthier, I'm losing belly fat, and I'm getting stronger. So <laughs> you're, so it absolutely works just by changing what you think. Yeah. Um, I don't say religious prayers like some people do. I just give thanks that the food be raised to the appropriate vibration to keep me strong, healthy, young, and lean. I like it. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I simplify everything. I don't, I try not to use any unnecessary words. Sometimes I get carried away and talk too much, but I, I try to keep it simple. And your, your belief system is the dominant factor that controls everything that happens to you. Uh, and I, I, I learned this from losers. I've actually learned more from losers than I have winners. I learned what not to do. And for all you folks listening out there, financial problems, do you talk about financial problems? If you do, you will attract more of them. If you talk about wealth, you will attract more of that. Wherever you put your thought, you put your energy. That's one of the most important things that I can tell people. So if you want to tell all your neighbors and friends and put on Facebook about how your arthritic knees hurt, they ain't gonna get any better. I don't know why people want to tell the rest of the world about all their aches and pains, but it's the worst thing they could possibly do, but they don't seem to get any smarter. 
I mean, you you know, I'm pretty blunt. P uh, political correctness is not one of my faults. I just call it spade spade. So whatever you continually talk about, changes are that's what you're going to attract to you. So when people ask me how I am, I got a standard answer. I'm older than dirt and tougher than nails. <laughs> that's my standard answer. Yeah. It's it's very true. Like one of the things that I liked in your in your workshops was just how you mentioned about even food and how you can get your body on the same frequency as your food. Like you know how you can douse and you can check the energy. So can I just ask you about that? Like when you douse and and check energy on food and why basically why say a certain food has a bad effect on someone and how you can change it. Just share, like, what do you do exactly? Like, how do you douse? How do you basically get yourself to the point where you're saying saying someone is a certain frequency and now they're not? Well, the real truth is you don't really have to douse. All it requires is thought. However, dowsing is a tool. Right here's a bullet pendulum. This is a tool, and that's all it is. I have people contact me, ask the pendulum something. The pendulum don't know anything. It's simply a bullet. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, I'm, this is what's made me so blunt with people, I guess. Um, mm. I just give thanks to neutralize the negative effect of whatever the allergic food is upon this person's body. That's it. There is nothing else. And we have had literally many miracles happen with this. People have been allergic to something for years. They may be 50, 60 years old. And when I'm teaching a class, we have people that are allergic to seafood and all various types of things. And I said, okay, go out tonight to a restaurant and order whatever it is you have been allergic to. If you survive, you get to come back to class tomorrow. We haven't lost anybody yet. It's that simple. Yeah, well, I one of the things now, I would... Sorry, go on, go on. No, no um, what happens if they do that and say, now, I think this is going to make me sick. I don't think that's going to work. You're probably right. It probably won't. Go, go ahead, please. No, I, I can remember when I went to your class um, eight years ago with my sons, which I'm sure you remember, and... They, I can remember being in horror when I went around a Bingdon in Virginia because there wasn't any of my normal health food restaurants. And my son challenged me and he goes, well, dad, you've just been in Raymond's class. Surely you can change the frequency of the burgers to make them like sourdough, make the lettuce as pure vibration, like organic and everything. And I'm like, you're right, let's do it. So we went down, we bought the most greasiest hamburger we could possibly find. We took out our pendulums and we, by intention, we just said that all the, all the food is on the correct frequency and, nu and nutritious our body. Probably one of the nicest burgers I've ever had. Yeah, you, do get, you did a good job. We've had, uh, I would say, a few hundred people doing things like that. Uh, also, Warren, uh, we can dial to determine what our body really believes. Yes. And the various organs of our body. And if we find that we have a belief system in part of our body that something is not beneficial to us, we have the ability to change that. I mean, dialing is something, it, it's really a way to perform miracles. And that's why I'm work to promote it probably in, a, in about 150 countries now uh, because it's it helps people have a better quality of life you can improve your health you can improve relationships with your family and with your business contacts uh, it's just amazing what all can be done I've never actually written a book on everything that can be done I, I doubt if I will because I don't have time to write books anymore but um, it, I, I just do it with in my classes I teach and in interviews with you. Uh, 
it's a way to get the information out to folks in a very uh, very simple manner. But um, uh, for you folks listening, please do not write and ask me if you can do something because I'm going to take you give you my answer right now. Try it and find out. I have too, way too many people writing me asking me if they can do something. My standard answer is there ain't but one way you're going to find out. Try it and see. So don't even bother to write and ask. I get way too much mail as it is. Yeah, well, so it, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to have these uh, talks with you because we're able to reach out there to people who are interested. And uh, it's it's pretty convenient, except for the time change all around the world. Like uh, we started at 6 a.m. my time here this morning. And that's OK. I don't mind getting up early to, to, to talk to folks. Um, but uh, if you take what you learn, practice it, and then share it with like-minded people. There's no point in sharing much information with people that are just hardcore skeptics because they're not probably not going to believe you anyway. Mm. So uh, uh, so many people want to convert other people. And I used to have that problem. When I started learning about this, I think, wow, I'm going to teach uh, as many people as would listen. Well, I did that, but there weren't nearly as many wanting to listen as I thought there would be uh some people just think you're crazy so just let them think it and go on about your business i learned that it's best not to try to convert anybody to my way of thinking if they want to know they'll come to me it, it just saves a lot of problems and if you're in a very religious family that don't believe in doubting uh then you've got even more problems if you try to explain it to them uh back in the early days <clears throat> a few times the some of the uh more religious fanatics would uh, say i was working for the devil and i said no that's not true i'm self-employed so uh, <laughs> that answer kind of, kind of eliminated the problem <laughs> uh, uh one thing i'm a, i'm about self self-empowerment and i really work at doing this because so many people are not empowered and if they want to help themselves, I'll try to help them, but I'm not going to try to force them into it. Uh, but learn how to uh, to answer people that are trying to put you on the spot or trying to discredit what you are doing. I've never quite figured out whenever you're working to help people to get well or to be more prosperous or whatever, why anybody can find fault with that. But they do. Uh, so I don't, I've just kind of weeded those people out of my life, and life got a lot better when I did. So um, what I learned, and I'm, a, I'm a very blunt and independent person. What I learned is there is only one person on that planet, on this planet, that I have to live with, and that's me. Everyone else is a matter of choice. And I tell a lot of people that you are the only person you really have to live with. Whenever you come to that realization, things get better. I like that. Yeah, so many people are worried about what someone else thinks. And uh, I don't have a concern on that. I prefer that people like me, but I won't do a whole lot to make it happen. Yes, I like one of your statements is about, what was it? Not everyone is created equal. You know, some some are losers and some are um, some are winners. And you know, we're definitely not equal to criminals and people who want to go around doing awful things. So, well, uh, that that human equality is it's uh, it's the biggest lie that's ever been put on on the uh, on the people. Because I'll give you examples. I may have. 40 people in class. I might get one that will do some really major miracles. I'll get quite a few people that will use it to improve their life, help their family, do things that we hope we're trying to teach them to do. And then there'll be a few people that wonder what the class was about. They just don't get it. 
so uh, I have never found any reason at all to believe in human equality. For example, there's my friend Jeff Jones, when he was in a class back in January of 97, saw me energizing water. And he said, if you're putting energy in water, I can put vitamins and minerals in it. I'd never thought of that, but he did. It's been 25 years now. And you still don't eat. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. So how can you say that uh, there's equality? Uh, some some people can just literally do miracles that I never even thought about doing. Uh, these are you really sharp people that's going to accomplish something. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's a he's an example of what can be done with the mind. Well, I built myself a new knee. That knee does not hurt anymore. I take long strides. I walk as good as I walked over 30 years ago. But it took me 30 years to figure out how to do it. Jeff figured it out a lot faster than I did. Uh, he, I mean, he attended one class and stopped eating, basically. Well, it took me a long time to ever get the idea that I could uh, go back in time and change my DNA. And I don't even know what the letters DNA stand for. Uh, but it was all done by intent and the belief that I could do it. It's the same thing with us cleaning up the lake out there. And every everything we've done, you you and I have done a number of things on our show here. Uh, but it's all done by intent and beliefs that we can do it. So uh, the human race has not really been motivated to believe in themselves. They've been more motivated to believe in giving the power to someone else. And I just don't believe in that. So wh where are we going next? Mm, I like that. The I just wanted to share before I start going through questions from people that what you've just said, exactly what I did, Raymond. I I was told by a specialist about seven odd seven years ago that I, you know, look, you're getting old, and that's why you're um your bone structure is getting more arthritic and stiffer in your neck. I said, absolute crap. I said, I just walked away and said, no, nah. I said, I, I, I started saying to myself, I'm like Benjamin Button. It's a movie about a guy who got younger. The, the more my years go, the younger I feel and the younger I get. And my body is in perfect health and my neck's getting better and better. And literally at the moment, my neck is moving the best it's moved since I was a kid. Like I have never been as good. I have no aches and pains. I was even in Bali and got measured on this machine, which can measure your physical age. And I'm like 20 years younger, according to the machine, than I actually am physically. And so it's working what you're saying. And healing. Well, for you right now, Warren, <clears throat> and I hope it's going to help you. I'm putting in the spirit of flexibility into your day. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. Into my way. Can you feel any different? Yeah. Like where, where are you putting it? Into my body? Yeah. Ooh. Okay, good. It just occurred to me that that might help. And I asked, is the spirit of flexibility in your neck and i got no and i said well let's put it there hmm. interesting yeah no i just i think we were saying this i noticed that when i shift my body starts shaking it's like it just releases felt a huge yeah. release yeah that's good well glad to help you thank you so let's start asking the questions um what i'm gonna what I'll do now is just ask some questions. So the first question I've got, and I have a few, but I'll go for really import, important. So one good question, you mentioned about DNA and going back in time. So he's, this, the person asked, like, how do you make changes on that deep, deep DNA level going back in time, things like generational trauma, um, finding negative energy in the DNA? You know, how would you clear that? That's one question I've got about the DNA and shifting all that. Okay, well, I have uh, the video on YouTube 
and it's free, Raymond Grace YouTube channel. And by the way, uh, Warren, uh, we did a, a session here a couple of years ago or so, and I told folks if they wanted some free videos to contact me and would give them to them. Well, I got overwhelmed with requests. So uh, the only way we could handle that was we just put them on, on Ray Raymond Grace YouTube channel. So uh, there's no reason to write and ask for those videos anymore because they're out there on our channel and they're free. So feel free to watch them, feel free to share them with anybody. Uh, I have to eliminate or to reduce uh, the amount of requests that people send because um, it, otherwise you would spend 24 hours a day at the computer trying to answer questions and it's just not gonna happen. So I try to keep things uh, as simple as possible but information out to people. Uh, I've made probably 80 some films and I only sell six of them. And that's the one that's a condensed version from my class on the website. Um, but uh, we, we just give away a lot of information really. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's see what, um, oh, oh, about uh, how to do this. Did well, you... again, I did it with intent. Uh, you say, uh, how did you know you could do it? I didn't. I knew if I didn't do anything, nothing was going to happen. I've got a, uh, a quote that uh, do nothing, nothing is going to happen. Do something, something might happen. So I did something. And I'll, 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 I've got that video that should explain it very well. So just watch it. Now, you can ask all kinds of questions, but uh, you're not going to be any better off. I put in there, I think, about everything you need to know. I just went back in time, the moment of conception, and removed all information from all strands of my DNA that contributed to a uh, non-functioning or painful left knee. And the pendulum spun counterclockwise for quite a while. And then I said, now, I want to go back in time, the moment of conception, and put in all of the information in my DNA for a perfectly functioning and healthy left knee. Well, the next morning I couldn't walk without a cane. And what had happened, I had built myself a new knee, but the rest of my leg hadn't gotten accustomed to it. Uh, and it took uh, three, I had to walk with a cane for about three months. And then I walked with a cane only periodically thereafter. And then I haven't used it since. And that was, that's been three and a half years ago. And I'm still taking long strides. I walk like I used to walk when I was uh, over 30 years ago. And uh, it's fine. I'm, and also I give, uh, I thank my body every day. I give thanks for a strong, healthy body. Now for all you folks out there listening, pay real close attention to this. This can make a big difference in your life. Don't tell all your friends, neighbors, family, whatever, about all your aches and pains. They don't want to hear them anyway. And all you're doing is supporting the aches and the pains. You're not doing anything at all to help yourself get well. Not only that, if it, some of these very well-meaning, benevolent people are going to feel sorry for you. Well, feeling sorry for a person is the worst thing you can do for them. So um, it's the best thing to do is don't tell anybody if you got a problem, unless they are capable of helping you fix it, because you're you're just really getting more energy, mental energy, focusing on your problem. Well, it, it's never going to get better. The secret to success is think of what you want, not what you don't want. That's pretty simple. So really, that's all I've got to say about how I built a new need. People want a complicated explanation. There isn't one. So yeah. what's the next question? Well, before we do next question, I'd like to try something with you if you're interested. Um, if you're open, okay. To, what What I would like to try is obviously there'll be people on this webinar who will be very more open and ready for this. That we actually people can bring. I'm trying to think. People, any any aches and pains or ongoing health issue that people have that needs healing or whatever else, I'd like to heal. That you and I together go back in time, see 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 if we can go back in time, shift on the DNA. So do what you did for your knee for a group of people. Would you like to try that? Well, I'm willing to do that 
it may or may not be caused by DNA. Yeah. It may be caused by an accident. It may be caused by just, a, um, mm. some people are hypochondriacs and they just worry about stuff and they create things whether there's anything wrong with them or not. So uh, my case, but even though I didn't really know this for a fact ahead of time, was apparently a case of DNA. And I have to say apparently because I'm still not sure. All I know is I solved the problem. So uh, the folks after a listing, this may or may not be a DNA problem. Well, what we could uh, just do is go. Find out. Let's it, find out. It, 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 take a moment. How many of the folks listening have a problem with DNA uh, on on aches and pain? They don't. That don't seem to be the case. Uh, how many people believe they deserve to suffer? There's where the problem is. Uh, that's one of the first questions I ask when working with people is to, and I, I use four areas of the body. Oh, actually one is not a body, it's a spirit. I find out what their soul believes, their brain, heart, and sexual organs. Uh, that seems to, the uh, reason I chose those things is because those are the four things that is necessary to continue life, uh, human life on planet Earth. Without those four things, the human race would become extinct in less than 100 years. So uh, that's why I check to see what they believe. It is amazing the number of people that believe they deserve to suffer. Why? Probably because religion has taught them that suffering makes them a better person. They've never converted me yet and are not likely to. So I think the best way I can help these people, uh, Warren, is to remove the belief from their body, mind, and spirit. We're not going to get into all the details. We're just going to keep it real simple. Remove the belief from the body, mind, and spirit that they deserve to suffer. Now I'm going to hold the pendulum up here, let it run like crazy here for a few minutes. It's going, it may take a while because oh, we've got over 100 people out there, and the majority of them, if not all, believe they deserve to suffer. And this probably is the best thing I can possibly do for our listening audience here today. Oh, yeah. You're feeling it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can tell. Oh. Okay. Oh. Now, in all honesty, Warren, sometimes my body does the same thing yours is doing. Mm. And it's it's almost uncontrollable. But right now, it's not doing that. But on certain occasions, it does. I've never quite been able to identify exactly how or why, but it does. All right. Now, what I'm going to do now is put in a belief system in all of your bodies, minds, and spirits there that suffering is totally ridiculous. It has never solved a problem for you. It never will. It never made you happy, and it never will. And you're not going to make any money with it. So there's no reason to suffer. I've got this philosophy. If it don't pay money or make you happy, you don't need it. I have a lot of blunt philosophies, really, that contradict society. All right, there we go. Now, let's just do my dowsing here and see what percentage of you folks listening out there now still believe you deserve to suffer. About 20% of you. Now, obviously, I don't know who's listening, but uh, we, uh, we helped 80% of them. For you other 20%, <clears throat> better think about this a while. You may not like what I'm saying. That's okay. Don't care. But uh, see if it makes any sense to you. I just think, have you been taught that you're supposed to suffer, that it's part of life, or it's part of being uh, spiritual or something? Uh, and then think about who taught you this. See what their life is like. Uh, it's a bad idea to take advice from losers. I prefer to take advice from winners. I like that. Now, one, I don't know if you're in a position to do this or not, and this is your choice, but if you could just get a, a wave or whatever from the people who felt, who feel a little bit better now because of what we just did. Yeah. So can people like click on the, yeah, raising the hand? Yep. Lots of people are raising their hands. Um, gosh, so far we have a hundred. 
help you folks? Well, we have 140 on the webinar, and already it's saying about 70 people felt a change. Okay. Well, that's not that's not a bad not a bad number. That's that's good. If we helped anybody, it was worth doing. That's good. Fifty percent, even more, it seems. So maybe it's gone up a bit yeah. since. So I'd say about sixty percent. Then these folks may need to think about this for a while. And uh, sometimes you get instant healing, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes it spreads out. It takes a while. I don't know why, but it probably takes uh, the human mind a while to actually accept that they're not hurting anymore. And I don't want to say that I can cure the world. That's not true. Because the fact that you're listening today, and I don't know what time you had to get up. I've been up since four o'clock this morning. But the very fact that you are listening indicates that you want to learn something. So you're going to have a lot better success than the people that don't know anything at all about this. Yeah, something else that another question I've been asked is about um, clearing cities, like something that you and I have done from time to time in in over in Perth and you've done. But like someone's asked, like, how do you make a difference in your community, your, your city? you know, clearing politicians to government just to make your city or society a better place? Well, that's not an easy question. No. And I don't know that I have all the answers. I probably don't. But my observation has been that politicians are undoubtedly the hardest people to work on to change of anybody. I can, I've got a real good track record of stopping serial killers. I mean, real good track record. But trying to change politicians, uh, it's, it's not easy. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I will say it's not easy. So there's the best way that you can do anything, and we've done this before in groups. I remember there was one building, I won't say where it was, it was in, uh, in the States, that there was a person in my class that said she worked in this building. It was a government building. And uh, she said she just stayed, was tired all the time. Well, I checked it out and I said, it's no wonder you're tired. I distinctly remember the number. There were 20 demons in that building. Now that's not normal, folks. Plus about everybody that I was possessed. Well, I did a clearing on it. And the building at the time, the location where I was, where the building was, it was from the East Coast to the West Coast, about 2,500 miles. Uh, and the lady uh, contacts me later. She goes to work two or three days later when she gets home. It's like a whole different place. But what happened whenever I cleared that, and I've never had this happen before, everyone in the audience could feel the energy shift. It was that intense. Wow. Now, uh, now we can remove entities and demonic forces I far as I know from anywhere on earth will that always change the people who work there and have an agenda it may or it may not uh, and that's about the only honest thing I can say however if you do if you do clean it up uh, let's just say political, buildings, government buildings, or whatever, at any level, from the county up to nation, and seem like the higher up you go, the more difficult it becomes. Cleaning up the county offices wasn't really any problem. Uh, but you will do no harm by trying. Now, another thing I want to tell you is don't be afraid. Why? Well, your fear will come upon you. So don't be afraid to try something. Just don't tell anybody what you're doing. It's a whole lot simpler that way. Um, if you just keep everything to yourself, nobody will know whether you did anything or not. You don't really need your name in the paper for depossession of uh, the government offices. Uh, that, that's not the goal. The goal is to create a better environment for people. So um, 
the worst you'll do when you try is to break even. I don't think that you're going to have any harm at all from it. And the best you can do is make maybe the people that work there, give them a much better environment to work in. Now, I've done hundreds and possibly thousands of cleaning up workplaces for people. And for the most part, it works. We may have been a few that nothing seemed to work. So don't believe that everything is going to be equal. It isn't. Uh, we may get real good miracles, uh, outstanding miracles. And then we may get just mediocre improvement. So just, just be aware of that. So go, go ahead, Warren, with the, with the next one. That's good. Well, the next question, I'll share quickly one of my own experiences, again, from you, which I applied because it relates to this question. And it's like about some of the other things you can do with dowsing and energy to improve your life. And I can remember how you taught about cleaning up airports before you go there. And I've noticed that whenever I've cleaned up the airport before I've gone there, it's just gone smoothly. And my most, probably the one that I've never forgotten was when I was in Las Vegas and just after seeing you and I went to the Wynn Hotel for breakfast and it was absolutely, the line was always like going out the door. And I remember saying to my son, oh, I don't want to go to the Wynn tomorrow because the line's always too long. And he said, well, if you keep saying that, that's what will happen to you. Remember what Raymond said? And I was like, okay, okay. So he said, why don't we create intention? We clear the lines and we just clear everything from the breakfast place for a smooth breakfast and it will be a short queue. So I said, okay. And it was a five minute wait rather than 40 minute wait. The next, and then my son said, well, I said to him, well, maybe we can just create a smooth walkthrough with no queue. So we did it next day and we, as we happened to get there, the queue parted and we walked in. So these are just some things I'd like to discuss with you. Yeah. Well, I would suggest that everyone clear airports before you travel uh, because it's potentially dangerous out there. Uh, I, I do this, I won't say who, but for some fairly well-known people. Um, I, I clean up airports before they go anywhere. I actually, part of my military people. Uh, so um, I'm always glad to do this for them. They're my friends. I can't do that for the whole world, so that's why we make films, so you learn how to do this and do it for yourself. Um, but uh, really, uh, on anywhere you're going, any travel, uh, program yourself to be at the right place at the right time, because timing is everything. Every uh, accident you saw on the road wouldn't have occurred if one vehicle had been two seconds fast or slower. So uh, being at the wrong place at the wrong time creates accidents. So we're programmed to be, and all you gotta really do is give thanks. I give thanks for being at the right place at the right time today. It's, it's that simple. A lot of people overcomplicate things. So keep it as simple as you possibly can. I like that. So one of the questions that someone's asked me as well about this is they say, obviously, you can you can start picking up other people's energies. And how do you keep yourself clean? And of course, I was just going to say to you, my understanding from what you, you told me a month ago, it's very important, especially it's like having a bath every day. You, you recommended to me every morning before I wake when I wake up. And when I go to bed, it's very important to basically clear myself and program myself, especially before you go to sleep at night. So can you share more on that and why this is important and what you do? Well, uh, you, you uh, were in class, so you would have gotten a list of affirmations that I made up. One of them is I repel all people and energies that are harmful to me. Another is I attract people, circumstances, and events that bring prosperity and, and happiness. So uh, our belief system attracts or repels whatever we believe it will. So repelling all people and energies that are harmful to us 
keeps troublesome people out of our life. And Warren, I just don't have the problem that society has. Now, living as a, pretty much as a hermit is part of it, but um, as a, if so many people tell me all about the problems, which I don't particularly want to hear, uh, I, I, but I do try to help them best I can. Uh, but problems with people are usually because you're just dealing with the wrong people. And you might say, well, I have a job and it's the only one I can get. Okay. Right here, I'll give you a trick. Check your spirit guides compatibility with you and whoever you don't get along with. And that could be uh, in your immediate family. What I found is if people's spirit guides don't get along with each other, the people aren't going to get along with each other. Now, this may be a stretch for some of you to accept, but you can actually change the belief systems of your spirit guides. When you do that, things are probably going to get better. Yeah. I learned this from one of my uh, older Indian lady friends uh, up in uh, British Columbia. And uh, one day she told me, she said, if you're trying to help somebody and your spirit guides don't like their spirit guides, you won't be able to help them. And I'm thinking, that's probably why husbands, wives, parents and kids, bosses and employees don't get along. The spirit guides don't like each other. And we have been able to correct quite a few problems just by changing that. Now, of course, one of the things you want to do, first thing is check to see if the other person is possessed. And if they are, well, then you got to get rid of the entity. Now, uh, it'd probably be a good time to say that on my website, uh, RaymondGrace.us, I've got six videos, one uh, CD that is a condensed version of the class. And one called Change Energy, Change Your Life shows you how to do an exorcism. Now, actually, I had the intention to put in that video that if you want to clean up a, a group, let's say it's wherever you work, uh, that would be the most obvious one, I guess. You simply play the video with the intent that it is being applied to every person that you work with. Because I realize most people get scared of the word exorcism. And they think, oh, we can't, we can't do that. It might come back and bite us or something. Well, I don't think that's true. It never gave me any problem. But that's why I created a film that would do this for you. And that way you don't even have to get involved. So I've, I've tried to make things as easy as possible for people. So I don't know if I answered the question or not. Uh, might have it a roundabout way, but if I didn't answer it well enough, go ahead and ask something else there. Yeah, well, someone's asked, um, what's the best way to stop, um, to clear an apartment or house of negative energies and even hospitals and medical practitioners when you're in hospital? That's, that's actually a good question, I reckon. It doesn't matter if it's a house, the county jail, a hospital, Joe's bar, it doesn't matter. Your local church, wherever. You do it all the same way, and you do it with that video that's going, I'm not going to take time to explain the whole thing here because you can get a download for $28. And uh, it's, it, just, just use that video to do clearing of whatever you want to. That's the simplest answer I can give you. So the video is on... Um... Oh, change energy, change your life. And it's at uh, RaymondGrace.us. Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, it's so much easier to make films that you can distribute around the world because that way uh, most folks can't afford to come uh, from Australia here to uh, do a class or from uh, somewhere in Europe. Uh, so what we do, we put the information in the film and they can buy a download for 28 bucks. And, uh, it's, um, it's a real simple way to do things. It's, it's the best way I have found to put out information. I like that. And then of course we do shows like this, that's free for people to watch. 
Yeah, there's, a, there's another very good one. Can you give any tips in terms of intention and dowsing as a parent to help parents of teens and support your kids better? That's a good one. I like that. To, now, if I understood that right, to support your teeth better? No, your teenagers, your children, like as a parent, to use this for your family. Oh, well, I would. I wrote a book on how I raised a kid, and I was really proud of it. And she is now raising two little kids, and she's doing a good job. And she also handles all my um, newsletters. April's the one sends out the newsletters, and uh, she also handles the uh, signing up for the energy clearing. Because we offer an energy clearing um, every day. We started out doing it once a month, and I realized that wasn't uh, enough, that people need it more than then. So I started doing it once a week. Then COVID came along, and it tore people up pretty bad. So I just started doing it every morning. I didn't charge any more money. I just worked 30 times more than I agreed to work. And so once a month, I agreed. I just said, I'm going to do it every day. And I, I've done that. Uh, so that's a, a good way to get your clearings done. Now, please understand, I don't do this on an individual basis. I don't need to know your street address. I don't need to know how many dogs and cats you've got and their names. Because I do this as a group, the same way that I did it. Uh, just a few minutes ago to take away the pain from quite a few people out there. I don't know your name. I don't know who you are. Uh, I don't need to know. I do the energy clearings exactly the same way. Now, some people find that hard to comprehend, but that uh, they either understand it or they don't. And if they don't, I don't really try to explain it any more than that and say I, I do it the same way I do in class if you were sitting in a classroom. Okay, but back to uh, this. I got I, I got sidetracked here. Uh, teenagers need to feel important, so compliment them. As a raising a little kid, every day and probably several times a day, I would tell her how proud I was of her. I would tell her how intelligent she was. I give that kid every compliment that I could think of. Well, I got two little grandkids now. I'm doing the same thing for them. Kids need to be emotionally supportive. They need to feel important. Make them feel they're worth something. I've worked with so many, and they were all female, that we just went through uh, a terrible growing up period because they were beaten down. They were never supported. Uh, it's it's really sad for some of the, so many of my work with. I, I can't imagine why parents would treat kids the way these girls have been treated, but they did. So to say uh, to do help, help your kids, and I admire you for asking, uh, support them as much as possible. Make them feel good about themselves. Tell them that you believe them. Uh, give them uh, teach them some of the stuff I'm sharing with you here. Uh, show them how to change energy. Uh, so if you do this with a little bit of work and maybe watching a, that video, you can have them clean up the school for themselves. That would be the ideal thing to do. Now, mm. when people ask me to clean up schools, I always try to help them out. But really the goal is teach their kids to clean up the school. And... Uh, if you can get them their belief system to where they, where you really tell them, I, I believe you can do this. It's really simple. Let's try. The worst you're going to do is nothing. You don't have to tell anybody. So if it don't work just perfectly, nobody's going to laugh at you. So let them do this, what I call behind the scenes, where nobody knows what they're doing. And let's and give them a kind of like a, 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 a contest or a challenge to say, let's just see if you can change all the kids in your classroom and your teacher, especially the teacher, to Mars where everybody is nice and friendly and polite to one another. I would love to start a worldwide program where they would do something like that, but I don't, I've already put out the information. I don't know what else to do because uh, I guess maybe I could, maybe I could do a newsletter like that or a suggestion, but now two, Two months ago, I guess this was the 
uh, April newsletter. Uh, I worked with a school bus driver that was in a very bad area. And I mean, bad in capital letters. Uh, those kids on her bus were like a bunch of wild animals. And she contacted me right after the morning uh, school bus run. And she was crying. She said, I'm crying after every trip I make with these kids. They are rude. They are mean. Uh, they're cussing you all the time. That evening, she wrote me back. This is not the same kid. They were polite. Two or three of them actually hugged me when they got off the bus. The woman was in class in April. I did a class over in Carolina and stood up and told the whole audience, I guess she talked for about 15 minutes on this, telling them how much different those kids changed from that morning to that afternoon. So if you, uh, I, I don't know of any way you can get my May, uh, my June news, uh, no, what was it, April newsletter now, uh, because we've already sent it out and um, I don't, I don't know if I can have it put up somewhere where it would be available or not. Maybe I'll have to, I'll have to check on that. Uh, if I could do that, uh, uh, I'm not very computer smart, but, uh, I'd, I'd really like to do that where everybody out there that has kids in school can get the word on this as to how, how we did it. Now I did it real simple. First thing is all those kids, every one of them lived in a house that was possessed. I mean, they come from a rough part of the world. Well, I had to get to all the Indians out of the house. I had to clean up the, all the, part of the teachers were possessed, clean up the school. And that's really what I, what I did. And then I took all the negative emotions like fear, anger, hate, all that in the body and turned it into love. That's really about all I did. And totally change the whole whole place. Love it. So if I can get people out there to do this, and I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to reach as many people today. And if you folks will just do something like this, uh, it's amazing what you can accomplish. Because if you don't do it, nothing's going to change. So go ahead, Warren. What's the next one? Yeah, well, I'll ask a few more and then we'll go through options to work with you. But let's just and for, to work with both of us. So another question that I've got, just because we've got time now, so I'll probably go for another another 15 minutes, Raymond, 10, 15. But someone's asked, um, when your body was getting used to the new knee, did you do any more ongoing intention and dowsing to help your body? When you had the cane, is there anything that you actually did, like like ongoing, or you just did it once? Oh, oh, uh, no, I'm not getting all this. Is that when I when I built myself a new knee? Is yes, referring to that? no, yes, I did it yes. one time. Yeah, one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what else do we have? Um, Oh, yes. A good question. Do you have any like suggestions for neutralizing or transmuting like pollution, um, like spraying from, you know, basically bad chemical spraying, um, electromagnetic sort of EMFs, um, basically 5G? Do you have any like like suggestions on that Wi-Fi? No, I, I don't have any uh, experience at all with that. Uh, what I do have, and we've told this story uh, a lot of times, is the alfalfa hayfield that was sprayed with Roundup. And there was not a single alfalfa plant left alive. And I scrambled the frequency, that's just a term I use, I scrambled the frequency of Roundup and adjusted the frequency of fertilized, and the farmer doubled the hay crop that year. That is one of the better things that we have ever done. Wow. That was, uh, um, that, that, I, I'm really proud of that one. And I, well, I was able to do it because I didn't have all the facts. I thought the hayfield had just been sprayed that morning. 
the farmer didn't tell me that every alfalfa plant had already died. If I had known that, I would have said, there's nothing I can do for you. But I didn't know that. Sometimes we, if we know too much, we know we can't do something. But since I didn't, I didn't know, I thought, well, I might be able to do it. So I just transformed Roundup into fertilizer, and by golly, it worked. Instead of getting three cuttings a year of hay, he got five. And instead of the hay being two, two and a half feet tall, it was four feet tall. I like that. Another one someone's put, this is a good question. Can you change another person's belief system by your intention? Because this one has a lot of controversy. And, I, and this is one I know your view on this is very different to many, and I'm inclined to agree with your view. Well, you can under certain conditions, and I'm not sure I know exactly what the conditions are. If the person is receptive to change, the answer is yes. If they're determined not to change, you probably can't override that. That's the simplest answer I can give you. But can you change a, if the, if the question is just simply put, can you change another person's attitude? Yes, a lot of times you can, sometimes you can't. It just depends on the person. Yeah, I found um, just two comments I'll make. One is I found that when I when I bring our spirit guides into compatibility, it makes things a lot smoother. So if I'm having conflict with someone and I work on our spirit guides, it does seem to help um, a little bit. And the other thing was you did once say in your workshop that although that's the case, you can't always do it. If people are doing a lot of evil and got possessions, well, then you can do it because if they're causing problems, that's one time you can override. Well, I find that you can depossess an evil person whether they like it or not. Yeah. Now, they may go get another entity uh, that day or the next day or whenever. Uh, but I, I have not found, I don't recall ever finding a person I could not depossess. But that doesn't mean that we turn them into a model citizen. Uh, it means that we just remove the entity. But some people are just naturally bad to the bone, and you can clean them up today and they'll go need it again tomorrow and probably for the rest of their life. And I just don't really fool with those people because they, well, they're a waste of time. Um, so there's a, there's a variation in uh, how much we can do to different people. We can get everywhere from nothing, no result to miracles. And it probably depends on more factors than I'm even aware of. See, folks, there's really not any hard and fast rules out here. You may think they are, but I, I haven't found that to be very true. There, it's a variation and it depends upon the person, their belief system, their attitude, their level of consciousness. Uh, if you got a pretty good person that just got possessed, maybe he got drunk uh, or was in the wrong place at the wrong time and picked up injuries, you can probably clean him up and he's gonna be fine. You've got other people that are basically habitual criminals and the only thing that's going to solve that problem is something called death. I agree. Um, just a couple more questions before we go through ways we can, you know, move forward. One I'll just ask is, can I, or any tips, this is a good one because I had this, cleaning up things with neighbors who are, say, cooking illegal drugs, poisoning my house and property, and just basically being disruptive next door, is there a way I can change their energy or do something about it? Well, the only way you're really going to know is to try it and find out. Yeah. And again, it depends on the type of people they are. In many cases, I've had people tell me that we've been able, with their effort and mine both, we have been able to turn bad people into good people, to put it simply. Uh, but it hasn't happened all the way. Uh, so the only way you're ever going to know 
to just try it and find out. Yeah, well, I had this happen to me two years ago. I had a very disruptive neighbor one night and they just kept playing music and they were being yelling. And my partner who I was with at the time was getting very distressed and she said, can't you do something about it? And I said, well, let's just see what I can do. And I got my bobber and I started to do some work for about five minutes and then I stopped. Five minutes later, all music miraculously stopped. Everyone went dead quiet and it turned into a peaceful party. And all I did was depossess any disruptive spirits, um, energies or unhelpful energies, emotion, negative emotional patterns, and basically said to harmonize with the rest of the neighborhood. And it, it seemed to work. So, Well, you did a good job. Well, one last question I'll take here, or actually two quick ones before we go through about your newsletter and things we can do for people. Just two final questions. Can Raymond clear or help us or give any guidance on clearing beliefs and scarcity and increasing prosperity? I think that's a good one. Well, uh, I made a video on prosperity called Prosperity and Freedom. And I put everything that I knew in that video. And it's available at the site I gave you a while ago, RaymondGrace.us, because there's a number of things here that would factor in that it would take a while to talk about it. If you get the video, you can watch it. If you don't understand it, watch it again. Yep. And keep doing it until you really get it. Because whenever I start saying, well, put your body on a proper frequency, you're going to say, what do you mean by that? I, I, that's why I don't a answer many questions by email. Because I will give a simple answer, which is true. But they will write me back and say, what do you mean by that? And I don't write long email. That's why I make films. You can make one film to reach thousands of people a whole lot easier than you can write thousands of emails. Yeah, agreed. Much better way to go. And last question I'm going to put here is, yeah, someone's asked about removing residual effects of COVID and illness and things like that in your body and around you. Any comments on that one? Well, first off, get rid of fear. Um, the world went crazy with COVID, and I don't want to talk too awful much about what caused it or anything, but the world basically went crazy. And they passed laws, you have to wear a mask, uh, you, they actually closed the banks down here, you had to drive through the drive-in window you couldn't go in the front door uh so the world basically panicked i never wore a mask i would be maybe the only person in a grocery store without one they made a law we had to wear one i ignored it uh i just i just carried on business as usual except for going in the bank i did have to go through the drive-in window but uh nothing else really changed uh i said this is nothing but a hoax said that from day one uh yeah it uh i don't doubt that there was a virus that made a lot of people sick probably killed a lot of people but i often wonder if fear didn't kill more of them than the virus did so uh I, what did i do i just ignored it it's uh I ignore an awful lot of stuff. Life's simpler that way. Well, I you got some uh, about uh, World War Three, and the person said, "Should I be afraid? No, should I worry about this?" My answer is always: You should never worry about anything. If you can do something, do it. If you can't do anything, just carry on business as usual. Worry, all worry does is weaken your immune system. It's never going to help you. It don't pay you any money. Don't make any friends. So worry is one of the worst things you can possibly do. Yeah, well, you may remember, and obviously this is never something that you can quantify, but 
one of the things that that we were doing of course that you may remember was I live in a state called Western Australia and at one stage in 2020 I thought is it possible to keep COVID out of our state for quite some time and I thought well let's give it a try and every single day we were doing clearing on it and I have no idea if what we did was a factor or not but effectively really for about 14, 15 months, they had the borders locked and we didn't get any hardly COVID come into it. So, um, yeah, I, I do believe anything's possible by intention. Mm -hmm. uh, our intention can be extremely powerful. I mean, you can perform miracles with your intention. But uh, what happens to most of the world, I think, is brainwashed to fear something. And fear is a terrible emotion. It weakens your body. I, I don't watch TV. And the re I, I mean, I see bits and pieces of it, but as far as sitting down to watch a program, I won't do it. Why? Because most of it is people fighting or having some kind of conflict. Uh, they never seem to be that happy. And I'm thinking, why should I waste my valuable time watching something that someone else has written a script for and a bunch of actors play out that doesn't make me happy. So I've got this attitude that if you don't pay money or make me happy, I don't need it. So I don't watch TV. I don't go to movies. Uh, I just, they have nothing to offer me. I live in nature. I live out in the woods. My entertainment's watching water run over rocks in the creek. It's a whole lot more entertaining than what uh, the commercial entertainment can, can offer me. So um, I realize not everybody would want to live like I do, but uh, one thing is for sure, I don't want to live like they do either. So that may be why I can do what I do. I don't pollute my mind with a bunch of useless junk. Yeah, one, one other final question I'm going to ask you, Raymond, is like, the power of being able to energize your water and things like that, just to really um, make a difference, and especially you share about how our body's made of water and why it's important to energize our water and even do like affirmations or clearing before we go to sleep at night. Can you just comment on that to finish off? Oh, okay. Warren, I, you may have ask me a little more I can comprehend all at one time. So let me answer the one question I know to answer and then we'll get back to the water. What I would suggest you do, and this is what I do, I don't ever ask for anything. I give thanks for everything. So at night in the morning, I give thanks for a strong, healthy body. I give thanks for a good family. I give thanks for a good, right now it's garden season here. I give thanks for good, uh, a good garden, a good water supply. I have my own water. I don't have to buy it. Uh, but do I live simple? Oh, I live extremely simple. Um, but uh, I just give thanks for everything. I give thanks for being at the right place at the right time. Uh, it, it's, it's just the way I live, the way, the way I operate. So about water, now specifically what, what you want me to do with the water? Oh, look, all I was saying was that you teach about how we can energize water to change the taste and to actually um, yeah. change well, ourselves. Well, I can do this probably for you folks out there listening today. If you want to do it, learn how to do it, well, then I've got one film called Energize Water. But let's, let's do this for everybody. Uh, now, all you folks listening out there, right now, if you can, get your glass of water, okay? Now, let's give them just a moment and then take a sip of the water. I want you to notice what it tastes like. Now, um, I've done this on, um, on interviews before and it has worked quite well. So I would like to do it for the po folks listening out there today. The day or the night, wherever you happen to be. All right, now, hopefully by now you have had time to get some water. We probably should have told them to get some earlier, but I didn't think about it. All right, now, the reason I want you to take a sip of that water is 
so you just know what it tastes like okay so what i want to do is ask uh is the spirit of water and most of the water out there that you're drinking no so what we want to do is um transform any and all negative emotions in that water into love. Next thing we want to do is transform all greed into pure water. See, if you bought that water, I'm almost sure that it would have the speed of greed in it. About all commercial water does. All right, now, we've done that. Now, let do what I call scrambles of frequency of the chemical, biological, radiological pollutants of the water that you folks have there in the glasses and adjust them to the frequency of pure water. Now, what we I normally do, I want to change this a little bit. I normally use a spring out in Great Falls, Montana, but this time I'm going to use my spring that's in the backyard. So I want to scramble the frequency of the uh, of the, of the impurities and negative emotions, everything that's in your water and adjust it to the frequency of my water. It comes out of the ground right, at, right here in, in my backyard. And now let's bring in all of the good characteristics of my water, energy, purity, good taste, everything, so that your water will equal my spring water. Now, let's see if there's anything else I need to do there. No, I don't think so. Now, this is the first time I've ever done this, so it's a good time to, to test it. Now, you folks take a sip of water, and if it tastes better, give a thumbs up or a wave or something so uh, Warren can kind of see if we had results. Yep, we're getting lots I might of waves. Oh, that tastes good. Yeah, I've got pretty good taste in water here. Yeah. Back up in the mountain, wow. polluted. Mm. Yes, um, the vast majority of people have said yes, they can taste it. Okay, good. I'm really glad to do that for you folks today. No, that's good. So to finish off, Raymond, thank you so much for coming today. And I want to run through other ways people can continue this work. I mean, one obvious thing people can do is type in Raymond Grace to, to Google and go to Raymond's YouTube channel because there's lots of videos there. I've gone through it myself. Is there anything else like or resources on your site or any website link you'd like to give to people which they can then go and have a look at things like what you'd like to well, uh, if anyone wants to be in on our morning energy clearing uh you can go to raymagracefoundation.org and sign up uh, uh 25 dollars a month and i work with doing the energy clearing every morning and part of that is to give everyone out there that signed up good tasting water. I work on the water for them every morning. Uh, I take the uh, work pretty seriously. Uh, what it doesn't mean is that you can write and get me to work for you uh, for $25 a month with all the problems and the in-laws and neighbors. And it does not include that, folks. Don't even go there. I agree, uh, but if you want to sign up, write me, and it's Raymond at RaymondGrace.us. I'm going to spell it for you, R-A-Y-M-O-N. Don't put a D on it, okay? Raymond at RaymondGrace.us, and say, send me the uh, list of the cleanup you do, and it's about 30 items that I do. So if you write and ask for it, it may take a little time, but I'll send it to you. 
and uh, that way you can decide if you want it or not. You don't ever get a sales pitch from me if you like. So this is what I do every morning. If you think it'll help, and a lot of people do. Um, and, but one of the main things I do, that's my way of reaching out to people to help them have good drinking water. And that, I work on it every day. So uh, that's that's really about the only thing I know. If you want to learn a little bit more, uh, you just go to RaymondGraceFoundation.org, uh, see some of the things we've done there. But um, that's that's about it. I'm, um, all I sell is free books and a, and a few uh, downloadable videos, and that's it. We don't have a whole lot of product. Well, we do have some pendulums, uh, but and bobbers. But, uh, you know, that's about it. Um, nobody ever really gets a sales pitch. It's like, this is what we have. If you want it, it's available. If you don't, it's okay. So um, that's, um, that's about it. I really appreciate you putting this together. And I put this in the newsletter, and that's why we have so many more people here today. I know. Uh, than, uh, what? Because I just, that article you wrote, I wanted the world to know what you had done. And that's why I put it in the newsletter. And then it occurred to me, well, let's tell them that we're going to have a, a, a talk today and uh, let as many people listen in as wants to. So I really appreciate you doing this. We've reached, Why? what was the total number we reached? 100 and how many? 140, Raymond. 140, okay, that's good. Uh, so hopefully you folks out there have been listening. This makes some sense to you. And uh, well, that's, that's about all I got to say is... Uh, I guess we we got people from around the world here, uh, so I really appreciate you tuning in. My pleasure. I'm just showing by screen sharing your site, Raymond. So this is where you go, everyone. And to basically find Raymond on YouTube, you just go Raymond Grace YouTube, and you will see all his different videos on the screen. That and second then... one on there is one where I changed a taste of water uh, in Alaska one day and had the person... Uh, on film, drinking the water and looking at the expressions on their faces. That's transforming energy around you. Uh, that's the se second one down right there. And then the first one is uh, Ozark Research Institute. That's where I tell about building myself a unique. That was filmed right outside here under a shade tree. And roll, scroll on down, see if I see any others I recognize there. Um, okay, then we got the one that you and I did. Okay, yeah. but there's, there'll be quite a few out there. I really don't know how many there are. Yep, there's plenty here. So just go through everyone, have a look at that. Um, those, these ones here. You got Raymond's site. We put the link in the chat. This is our one, The Awakening Within. If you want to stay on top of our different clearings and, and things that we do, just go and join our mailing list. And of course, the one I'm very excited about is this one to be your own doctor so this is what i'm doing next week at the same time and because many we got inundated with questions raymond about flower essences and how i used herbs to infuse so i'll be doing a specific free webinar on this next week and i'll be sharing more about it so yeah just register and let people know and i'll be glad to kind of share as much as i can to people Okay, I guess we're out of time. So I, I guess appreciate we are. the invitation today and I wish you the best. And uh, you too, Raymond. You Thank folks you. Out there, uh, just give some of this stuff a try and you will probably surprise yourself at what you can accomplish. Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you again so much for your time. Um, really appreciate it and look forward to seeing you on the next one, Raymond. Okay, we'll, we'll see if we can have something new the next time in. You let me know when you're ready. I will indeed. Thanks again. All right. Have a good evening. You too. Bye for now.